hey guys welcome back to my channel today i will be showing you guys how to sew and create your own sublimatable mask now masks could be sold and found anywhere including walmart like you can just walk in and grab one but some people want custom and cute masks so let me show you how to make those so the first thing you guys want to do is to figure out the size that you desire for your mask to be today the size that we will be creating is just like these three you see in front of me now you can do simple mask you can do plain mask or you can also make it a little frisky the possibilities are endless today's business that i want to share with you guys is nola adulting the lead therapist there is philomena dolce she is also the founder of this black owned therapy service and guys even myself am in in therapy for anxiety so i understand what it feels like to be in that situation go ahead and check out her website for services as well as testimonials if you guys are not ready to start therapy follow her on instagram for words of the day quotes, memes, and even videos by her herself where you guys can get to know more about her and everything around that. Now we're just going to go ahead and get back into this project. The first thing that you want to do is start out with some polyester fabric. Now there are different forms and types of polyester fabric. For example, there's scratch polyester fabric that is similar to the polyester mask that I have here. This one is more of a jersey knit and this one is more of a scratch um more of a four-way scratch fabric now this mask that we're making has more of a cotton feel which is still is polyester and it just is the mask fabric that i prefer go ahead and find you guys some polyester fabric come back and we'll get started with this pattern now the pattern is pretty much self-made really easy we're going to measure six inches by four inches when you go ahead and measure out your rectangle you're just going to get ready to cut it out now you don't have to be absolutely precise but the better you are the better it will come out we're going to go ahead and cut out that rectangle that we have created we're going to fold it in half and we're just going to start from the middle and curve on down to the outer edge when you have that you'll have more of this round rectangular shape and you can cut off any sharp pieces from that middle fold now that we have our pattern created, we're going to go ahead and cut out what we call the bias. Now the bias is what makes this fabric look nice and clean when it is time to be prepared, when it is time to be sewn together, and it just, it just, it's the, the part of the show that steals the show. So here we're going to make sure that our bias is one and a half inches wide. And I'm going to go ahead and fold this fabric into four pieces. It's about 46 inches long and we only need about 40. So this is going to be the bias that goes on the outside and all the way around your mask square. Now, what I like to use is a rotary cutter and we're going to make sure that it is 28 to 31 inches long, depending on the size that you want your mask. I made one that was a large, which was 30 inches, but I would prefer to do it 29 inches would be a medium or a small would also fit me as well. So every inch up is a size more that scratches for your mask. Now this is me measuring out the 30 inches that I need. I'm gonna go ahead and snip that away. And now we're going to measure out those sides. I don't really have a number for that. It's just however long your pattern ended up coming out. So it's about four inches because it should be a little less since we cut off the sides of our four inch rectangle. So now, if you guys wanted a full image like the one that I have here, this will be the time to sublimate it. If you guys end up selling it and someone wants that, they can make this shape a bit smaller with their image, put it under those layers and sublimate it. But this is going to be a simple logo mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my mask all together. You guys can cut out your shape two different ways you can use the rotary cutter or you can use scissors fabric scissors is suggested to make sure that it comes out as neat as possible but once again with the bias it doesn't have to be perfect now here i am getting prepared to show you guys how we're going to start adding this bias we no longer need our cutting board we're just going to go ahead and get started the first thing you want to do is take that long 28 to 31 inch bias that you have here and you're going to iron it in half you're going to do the same thing with those two pieces that we cut for the sides as well when i'm done i'll be right back 
Now that I finished, I'm going to show you guys how we assemble this all together. Now I made sure that this was two layers, so you actually can do two designs, one on the front and one on the back. Your customers can as well, it's really up to them. As I showed you guys, there's two different ways to, to design this, or like really the possibilities are always endless. So now you do want your bias to cover it just that way, so what we're going to do is flip it on this side and you want to make sure the part that's touching it is the sharp part of the crease the outer crease and you're just going to sew a 1 h seam allowance right across that line now that is how it looks. we have three layers here we're going to push all three layers into that crease that we created and from there we're going to see how nice that looks oh my gosh i'm so excited and from here we're going to fold that raw edge on the other side right up into that crease as well now you guys can see this is fully ready. We're going to pin it in place. Now for me, sometimes I pin it, sometimes I don't, but for you guys who are learning, you might wanna just go ahead and pin it in place. And we're going to drop our foot and sew a straight line right down. Now I wanna show you guys how it looks. But we're gonna do it one more time because you have to do it on both sides. Now this is me doing it without using any clips or any pins, anything like that. I'm just going to fold it and top it and like tuck it right under my foot and let my foot hold it into place. Make sure that all your ends are tucked in and we're gonna sew that straight line right on down. And you guys, this is how it looks. It has a really nice and clean look. We're gonna go ahead and clip off that hanging fabric and get ready to add our bias. Now this is the way it's supposed to look when it is sewn on properly. You have your raw edges and your crease is pointing towards the fabric so that you could flip it over. You wanna make sure that it's not turned or bent or messed, mixed up in any way because that happened to me before. So we're gonna go ahead and just sew a line to seal the bottom of our fabric. You wanna make sure that it is nice nice and clean just like this and that your creases were facing inwards as well now it is time for us to find the half of this what is it called again binding I absolutely forgot my mind just went blank but you just want to find the half of this and you want to go ahead and fold this in half as well and just snip it now I like to snip my halves but you guys can absolutely pin it you can mark it with chalk anything like that and from those snips that we created we're just going to pin around this square the top and the bottom only find your not your next snip and just go ahead and seal these three main points if you feel like it's a little off you can add extra pins but it looks fine to me so we're just going to go ahead and so that one eighth or a little less than one eighth seam allowance. Just make sure you get all layers together. If you have to adjust, adjust, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side of our fabric. From here, you guys have officially caught up to the D demo or the promo demo <laughs> the demo that I showed you guys prior to and we're going to do the same thing take those three layer raw edge and tuck it right into the crease we created and fold over the other side where we just create the bias to cover it okay and that's how it looks and we're going to do the same thing to the other side just make sure that all of it is tucked under guys so that no raw edges are out and exposed and everything get caught in the sewing machine. So that is a nice neat look. It can go into the washer. Some people just want to take off their mask and toss it, toss it in into the washer. And you guys can bleach these masks. You can um, sanitize them. I know a lot of people are scared of the virus, different things like that. So there's different ways that you can keep this sanitized and clean when we sew it correctly. Now at this point, I'm just going to go around the ear parts. This is the part that goes around your ear. I'm just going to create that binding. Both raw edges are going to get folded 
evenly into our crease to where we create this nice, neat look. And you guys, this is so many clips. I just like to be um, thorough. Now, if you guys wanted to, you actually could have um, folded the binding in half and then folded it again and have an iron it both times to make sure that you have an easy binding process. But um, I feel like you'll use time during that part or this part. And I just chose to do it this part. But let me guys know what you think. Which way do you prefer to make sure that your binding works out? And that is easy when it comes to sewing. We're just going to sew a straight line all the way around and backstitch where we started, when we end. Now, I'm just making sure that all my ends, even after I take my clip off, are still intact because you really don't want any raw edges peeking out, sticking out, and that will happen if we rush through it too fast. So make sure that you take your time. And those things come into consideration when you're pricing your items. So just make sure that you um, give yourself what you deserve. I know a lot of small businesses watch me and you guys are trying to figure out what you want to do, what's your niche. Um, how much should you sell your items for um, is really up to you, but just make sure that you're not selling yourself short. So now that we went ahead and we sewn all the way around, I did my back stitch and we're going to cut off all of those extra threads that are just flying around and hanging around. And honestly, guys, that is it. Like you have created your own max. If you guys have a double needle, you can use that. If you guys have a single needle, you can go around twice, but once is uh, great for me. And there's so many possibilities, as you guys see, that was those two ways. So thank you. All right, you guys, so I'm going to show you what it looks like when I try it on. Um, this one personally is one that I created for me. <clears throat> so because there is no scratch, you guys may be worried about that. You could try to scratch it. It doesn't scratch, right? And if I were to try to put it on both ears at once, it would be like a, I mean, it's possible, but I really do one ear at a time because it's a perfect fit. And this one was 30 inches. But next time I'll even make it smaller. I will probably make it a 39 inch. So 29 inch. A 29 inch. So okay. So that is what it looks like. And the reason why I say I will do 29 inch guys is because as you can see it comes up and down easy, right? So if I were to make it an inch smaller, it'll feel nice and snug. I like my mask to be snug, but not like hurting my ear. So there's no elastic to worry about. It's just nice, soft cotton behind my ear. <laughs> I hope I'm not too close. <laughs> I hope I'm not too close, guys. But that is how this looks. So I don't know if you guys can tell I'm smiling behind the mask, but thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys for being faithful subscribers if you guys like this video please share if you're in a business group go ahead and share because i want you guys to be able to make money just as much as me and guys there's enough people out there in the world who need things for us to be able to share and let other people make money as well so go ahead guys and leave um a comment below please like this video the more you guys like it the more youtube share me i am a work at home mom this is what i do this is my job i decided to leave the 40 hour a week to do this at home so you guys this is my bread and butter so help me put bread and butter on the table go ahead and like this video go ahead and share it leave a comment encourage me as i encourage and teach you guys thank you so much for watching television i'm still learning this television Love somebody, guys, and let them love you.